Well, it has been quite a week for our local good causes. Every night we've seen them competing for a big lottery fund grant of up to £50,000 to help their community. And every night you have been voting who you want to walk away with that cash. Well, last night we heard from the last of your People's Millions projects. And as always, the best bit was giving one of them that big cheque. So, who was it? Well, it was the Luton Road Sports Field in Bedfordshire. <laughs> And uh, bless them, they clearly couldn't wait to get back on that pitch, especially since now they know it will be getting some TLC and some proper drainage. But that is not quite it. All week we've been promising there will be a special surprise in store. Yeah, obviously there is some disappointment for some of the groups who don't win. And uh, so with that in mind, the lottery fund decided there should be a kind of a bonus ball, I suppose. And they said that uh, of all the runners-up this week, the project that had the most votes overall would also receive a cheque for the full £50,000. And the winner of that award was... Yes, it's this lot in Cottenham in Cambridge. We heard from them on Tuesday about how they wanted to change a disused church into a community centre. And, of course, we couldn't wait to go back and film them when they got the good news. Love giving out those big yeah. checks. Uh, £250,000 in total we've given away now. Lovely. And uh, talking of cash, will you be out Christmas shopping this weekend? Because uh, many stores are expecting the seasonal spending spree to begin in earnest tomorrow. It will almost certainly mean a big bonanza for the region's main shopping centres, of course. But will our many market towns cash in too? Well, our correspondent Neil Bradford has been finding out. He joins us from one small town in Bedfordshire tonight. Uh, it looks, uh, well, extremely festive with Santa over your shoulder there, Neil. It certainly is. Hello, Santa. Uh, I've got a mulled wine somewhere here in Leighton Buzzard. Now, a few years ago, this town earned the dubious reputation of being the first in the country to put up its Christmas lights in September. Now, a lot has changed since then. The retailers have got together. They've formed their own marketing group. And now they know they haven't got the best Christmas lights. They know they can't afford a big star like Bath did last night with Nicolas Cage switching on the lights. But they do this instead. They have a great weekend with fair ground. The shops are open late. There are barbecues and all sorts of things. And it's just one thing they're doing to compete against their much bigger neighbour, Milton Keynes, which is just a few miles away, and even London, which is only half an hour on the train from here. When we've all finished shopping, it's estimated we would have spent an average of £450 each. In Leighton Buzzard, shopkeepers are determined to make people spend it here. Living in the shadow of the much larger town of Milton Keynes, they have to think big to compete. If you look at this town, there is, there's hardly any empty shop units in the town at all. There are new businesses opening almost weekly in the town. And, you know, people have got confidence to come here and invest here. So if it works in Leighton Buzzard, it can work in any other town. The I Love LB franchise has been so successful here, it's now spread to other market towns in our region, including Saffron Walden in Essex, Newmarket in Suffolk and St Neots in Cambridgeshire. Retailers there are also hoping for a busy weekend. For many, this weekend will also be the time to go shopping for a tree, but there's a bit of a shortage. The variety which doesn't drop needles is likely to be in short supply because of a hot summer and changes to farming subsidies in Denmark, the country that grows them. It's good news for growers like George Agnew from Bury St Edmunds. We've had a lot of rain, um, and on the whole that's excellent. The only thing we're a little bit concerned about is that we haven't had any good frosts around here, and that's the thing which makes the trees dormant, and the dormancy makes them sort of um, hang on to their needles better. But commerce, of course, is not the true meaning of Christmas. And in the cathedral city of Ely, how could you forget? A live nativity scene officially marking the start of Advent. There's been people making us wonderful costumes and it's just the whole getting together. It's just wonderful. And to be able to go out into the streets of Ely and, and tell everybody this story is just, it's just something amazing for us. The nativity is something that will be acted out in almost every playgroup in the region in the coming weeks. But how many of them can boast of live camels? Make way for their royal majesties, Balthazar, Caspar and Melchior. 
Well, certainly no live camels here tonight, but uh, a lot of businesses have been skating on thin ice over the past year because of the recession. This Christmas shopping weekend is vital to them, as are the other weekends leading up to Christmas. And it's not just Leighton Buzzard, of course, it's all our market towns right across East Anglia. And they're hoping that the shoppers remember the true meaning of Christmas, uh, but also spend their money in the shops too. Neil for now, thank you very much. Didn't it look lovely? Right, now, do you remember the pint-sized painter, Kieran Williamson? We featured him back in the summer. Yes, the seven-year-old's amazing talent has already been recognised by the art world, and today, well, it really paid off. In a huge way. All 16, here's one of them, that's of Kieran's paintings. They sold within just 14 minutes of going on sale in Norfolk today. It was for a whopping £17,000. Natalie Gray's been back to see him. At nine o'clock this morning, Kieran Williamson's work went on sale at the Picturecraft Art Gallery in Holt. Fourteen minutes later, all 16 of them had gone. Their masterpieces by this young master, a normal schoolboy with mud-covered knees from playing football. International buyers from as far away as Tokyo, uh, mainland Europe as well. Incredible. The amount of people on the doorstep as well was quite frightening, but it was more of a brawl than an art exhibition, but uh, certainly a lot of satisfied customers. Brilliant. Overwhelmed. £17,000 made in the time it took Kieran's mum to take him and his little sister to school. I came into the gallery and uh, met with Keith um, and I looked at the wall and there were just the, you know, the red signs there to show that they'd all sold. So I was absolutely amazed but very, very disappointed that I'd missed you know, missed the scrum of the morning. <laughs> just a mad scramble for his work and... Uh... The phones were ringing all the while. The phone went down, it then rang again. The transactions couldn't go through. And I just got a bit emotional. What's your dream? Because you're getting nearer and nearer it all the time. And have my pictures hang up in Buckingham Palace. We met Kieran back in the summer when he was six and had been painting for only a year. Since then, he showed at the Saatchi Gallery in London. It's extraordinary to see how much Kieran has come on in just two years. This is his work from when you were how old? Five. Imagine what he's going to be like in another two years. Kieran's thousands are to be invested for him, though he is being allowed some pocket money. What's he spending it on? Art stuff, of course. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Holt. How fantastic and how talented. And I'm so jealous. I sort of get stickmen out of proportion. I'm so unartistic, as my parents will tell you. And he said that he wanted to get, was it, a painting on the walls of Buckingham Palace. You wouldn't bet against it, will you? Right, uh, here's what to expect on the national news in just a couple of minutes from now. But first, of course, time to see what the weather is doing. Let's go back outside with a rather festive-looking Amanda Houston for the forecast.